All right. What's up, man? What's going on? Glad to have you here. So uh, last time we chatted, you were you were living in Japan. You were in the military, right? In the Marines? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was a Marine for four years, joined in June of 2019, and then got out uh, in May of 2023, like jet, like two weeks ago. But yeah, I was deployed. I deployed twice to Okinawa. Mm -hmm. So I was there. I was there like right when COVID hit and the military went crazy. Like, oh, what do we do? You know? And then, then I went back this year and then, uh, I, I think I got there in like November of last year and then I left in, um, April of this year. Okay. What did the military do when COVID hit? Uh, yeah. So I was, uh, right as I deployed COVID hit. So we were hard ROM, they call it. So it means restriction of movement. So pretty much quarantine. And, uh, they, they had us on quarantine for two weeks, uh, over in Okinawa. And, uh, just, I, that time I, that was probably my most progressive uh music production gain i've ever had just because <laughs> it was like a super hard quarantine where you like literally could not leave your barracks room so you had like a roommate and that was it and they were just in there for two weeks straight up could not leave like if you left you got deranked twice or something so for me music production was um like a like an outlet a creative outlet that i could actually pursue one of the like, the only things i could actually pursue while i was in and like all these different locations because i just had this you know like macbook pro and that's kind of how I got into it. And then, yeah, all my downtime that I had in the military, I was just producing music. Did you start producing before you went into the Marines or was it something you picked up to pass time? So before I was in the Marines, I was a beatboxer. I'm a, I was a pretty good beatboxer and I made some YouTube videos on it. I went by Nemesis Beatbox for a while. Okay. And then when I joined the Marines, I couldn't beatbox anymore. So I was like, okay. I had, I always, I've always had this like rhythmic kind of mind, you know, like I'm naturally more inclined towards rhythm. Like that's kind of like what I would consider my natural innate, like, okay, I get rhythm, but tonal stuff or like melodic stuff. I've definitely had to learn that, but rhythmically I've been very like, kind of like that for a while, but yeah, I started out beatboxing when I was like 14. Um, Cause I saw one of my buddies do it and I got super, super into it. And um, yeah, I just did that for a while. I can, I can give a little demo if you want. Yeah, go take it away. All right. <clears throat> Wait, wait, wait. It's not picking up your it's not picking it up for some reason. Is it now? It's 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 just gating it for some reason. All right, try again. No way. It's it's gating it. <laughs> okay. Is it still doing it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like it that's sucks. not dia that's not dialogue. We don't need to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it's it's cool, you know, I guess. All right. The people are going to have to live without it. But if they did want to check it out, is it still up on YouTube? Yes, it is. It is. You can look up Nemesis Beatbox and you can see really cringe videos of me when I was a kid. I made a lot. Of, I, made, I got up to like 15,000 subscribers and I made a lot of tutorials, made some money off it as a kid. Yeah, you can go look up Nemesis Beatbox and that's kind of where I started. And that's kind of where I got my rhythmic touch, I feel like. But yeah. Uh, do you ever incorporate your beatboxing into what you're doing now with Trisect? I really want to, but uh, when I was in the Marines, I had a roommate and I'm not trying to like sit there, produce and then like be on my mic like, uh, hoop. You know, you know, like doing yeah. weird stuff. So, so I haven't yet. I mean, yeah, I really haven't yet, but I've tried a couple of things out, but I do want to incorporate. I would really like to, because I can do like certain bases. I would really like to make like wave tables out of them or something. And then maybe make like a, like a fill pack of like me doing like little drum fills, beatboxing, and then add that in there. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Especially with what you have going on now and like layering it in. Plus it'd be super unique, you know, not a lot of people making like beatbox mashed up with bass music it's it's very hard because it's it's very easy to make that stuff sound gimmicky like like oh you know kind of like gimmicky so mm. i don't want to i've tried it a couple times and it like it either ends up sounding hellishly sinister like like i make dark bass music but that was like way too dark because i was just like transposing down my bass like dude this is some demonic shit i don't want i don't like <laughs> this is crazy or it just sounds too like fruity and gimmicky so i'm trying to find that like sweet spot but yeah Nice. Just got to keep keep iterating on it. Okay. Uh. So why did you uh why did you leave? Well, actually, in the first place, I guess. Why did you join? Decide to join the Marines? I didn't want to go to school. Like I just graduated. I joined when I was seventeen, and I'm twenty one now. I uh I didn't want to go to college. I was like, I don't want to do school. I just didn't like that structure, at least at that time. And then I had one of my buddies, Connor. He uh got me into into the Marines because he was joining. I was like, oh, that's super cool. I was super motivated. I wanted to do it and it was it was a good experience, but I pretty much joined because I really didn't want to go to school and I wanted to make something of myself. And also yeah, I knew if I ever did want to go to school, I would have the GI Bill. If you ever heard of that, it's like um, it's a it pays for four years of schooling like completely. And you also get like housing allowance. So it's really, really nice. That's a sweet deal. And then uh, why did you decide to leave then? 
just wasn't for you or yeah four years is definitely enough for me because i with with the marines like for example music which is like my one of my biggest passions uh it's hard to play like pretty much impossible to play shows you know what i mean or schedule dates or to like do any kind of in-person music community stuff networking because i'm just well i'm flying to japan now and and then in japan it's like it's hard to travel it's hard to get out because you have to like do all this go through all these systems or whatever um it's definitely for some people but for me i was like okay four years is definitely enough i'm not going to do another four because then it's eight and at that point might as well do 20 because it's like now i'm you know so yeah i just got after four all right understandable i have no idea what it's like but if you're down in Okinawa, like there's not active conflict in, in Okinawa. So like, what do you spend all of your time doing? Do you have a lot of time to set aside for music or do you just have to squeeze it in? That's a good question. Uh, right now, the Marine Corps is kind of in like a non-combat phase, you know, like there's not a lot of combat. I never went and saw combat or anything, um, which uh, I'm thankful for now. But I joined and I was like, oh, I really want to see combat. I really want to see, you know, the tough shit and uh, get into it. And so that's why I joined and I was a machine gunner. Uh, that was the job I picked because the machine gu machine gunners is like infantry and they usually go to combat um, if there is combat. And I, I wanted to like, that was another reason I joined. I wanted to kind of, I kind of wanted to see what it, what like true reality looks like outside of a first world country. Like what does it take to preserve that? And I wanted to see like the, I don't know. I just, I found that really interesting and I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to try it. But wait, what was, what was the original question? Sorry. Oh, just like how much downtime you had and how you fit music oh. into it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's no combat in Okinawa, but um, there's a big base over there and there's a lot of uh, jungle bio, you know what I mean? So Marines go there for deployments uh, to train and do like jungle warfare exercises and stuff like that. So we did some of that stuff, but there definitely is a lot of downtime on the deployments. There's a lot of like classes and there's a lot of like little administrative stuff. Mostly Marines being in Okinawa is like um kind of just like a presence like okay we're here you know like if anything happens we're close in the pacific you know what i'm saying so it's like a pacific presence so honestly not much so yeah there is a lot of downtime and in that downtime i would focus on uh learning more about music production like watching all kinds of videos and trying stuff out or just like experimenting in ableton or whatever but uh but yeah nice the military i guess worldwide is pretty famous for being like hard edge and like focus on discipline and things like that do you think being in it helped you get better at regimenting your time and like fully applying yourself to tasks that you want to yeah yeah that's a good question too um it was very interesting because when i went into it i was expecting to have like super structured you know like this is it this is that this is it this is that and it was actually surprisingly like disorganized in a, in a weird way it was like if there was ever a plan, because every time you go to train or do like an operation or whatever, you have a plan, you know what I'm saying? And I noticed every time we went to go out and do it within five minutes, that plan that we took weeks writing down and like scheduling, gone, just gone, you know? And it really made me realize the the uh, chaotic nature of war. Like it's it really is just a crazy concept. You know what I mean? Like human beings disagree. A couple human beings disagree. And now we're sending like sons of mothers you know, brothers to sisters, or whatever it is to go die and kill each other for some like disagreement. I don't know. The whole concept's weird. And I really learned that war is just a mess. And whoever can handle the mess the best usually wins. So yeah, that's what I realized is like, okay, my job is very like, you need to figure it out because there's no clear plan. And if there is a plan, it's going away in like five seconds. So I would say the biggest thing I took from the Marines was just like, being able to just like make decisions on the fly mm -hmm. and just be like, okay, I'm doing this. Like, this is what I'm doing right now. And this is all I'm going to be doing. And I feel like that mindset really helped um, specifically with like producer anxiety, which I know like a lot of people get, like everybody I feel like gets it. Oh man, like is my master hitting minus three lefts or minus eight? And you know, is Spotify compression gonna, but like, what if that guy says my, my synths are too low and I should have raised this like two DB and you know what I'm saying? Like all these, all weird shit, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I was just like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I told myself this, like right as I started producing, like, okay. I'm going to consistently release music like once a month, I'm going to release a song like that's what I'm going to do. And from that, that's just going to be like my rule. OK, one song a month. That's what you're outputting. Mm -hmm. Don't care what you think. That's what you're going to be doing, you know? Yeah. And like I made sure to schedule that around the military too. like, OK, I'm going to be gone this time. So I need to make sure I grind on Ableton this time and then finish this on. But yeah, that was a big thing was just like with producer anxiety, I've just realized nobody really gives a shit literally nobody gives a shit you know what i'm saying like and if they do it's like a oh it's like a five second oh yeah this is kind of this is kind of ass whatever you know what i'm saying and then they like move on with their day like oh you know yeah nobody cares as much as you 
nobody cares as much as you. And that's liberating. It's a very liberating thing. Cause it's like, if you can ease up on yourself, there's nothing in your way, dude, just keep outputting. And I don't know. I always think about like death, you know what I'm saying? Like when I'm rotting in the ground, am I going to give a shit about my minus three DB master that had some slight distortion at three minutes? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I won't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, Hey, when I'm dying, I release some dope bangers. They're going to stay on Spotify. And if I'm rotting in the ground, that's fucking cool. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I kind of just kind of came to that. And I was like, okay, I just keep putting out music. And for me, it was like, I noticed that starting a new song every month or like multiple ideas all the time, you know, whatever. And like, you can, you know, swap out trash and whatever it is, but like one song a month output was much more effective for me than just overthinking one song for like three months or a year or whatever it is like, okay. You know, because I realized the actual production process and like that practice of decision making really helps kind of just like get the flow going. And then once you start getting in a flow and then once you start like showing yourself that you're consistently releasing once a month, it's, I don't know, it all becomes easier. You know, like once you start like actually moving and like just releasing consistently, I feel like you learn a lot more too when you're just like trying out new ideas on different songs. And every time I make a song, I learn something new about Ableton or about a method for like sound design or something like that. Oh shit, that's cool. Yeah, you know, I could automate that. Oh, that's cool. You know, little tiny pieces. Whereas with one song, once the production's done, now you're just sitting there staring at it, just judging the shit out of it and tweaking shit. And it's just like, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're just, you're just stuck. You know what I mean? So for me, my workflow has been, um, it's just my workflow, obviously, you know what I mean? Like everybody's got their own mojo, but for me, it's just been consistent releasing and just kind of saying, fuck it. Like, it's good. It's good. You know what I mean? All right, cool. So yeah. 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 Moving through the whole process and like practicing, finishing songs, doing songs, start to finish and like getting every single step along the way and kind of just at some point being like, uh, this isn't quite as good as I want it to be, but you know what? Like I have a deadline to hit. So it's good enough. Yeah. And then sometimes the things that you thought were good enough, you like put them out and you're like, oh, actually, that's that's pretty sick. And I'm like, it wouldn't have mattered if I'd put 12 more hours into that because like it's fine how it is. And like I can do it better next time. But that's true, man. That is so true. It's like it's there's a lot of psychological concepts that you can kind of like hack your brain into of like the deadline thing of like, okay, well, I have to release it at this time. Like this is when I'm releasing it. So here's what I'm going to do. And then once that deadline hits, it's done, you know? And I've realized too, like whenever I finally release something and it's on Spotify and on SoundCloud and shit, and then I like listen back to it as if I'm just a listener. Like if I like listen to it in the car and I was like chilling, I'm like, Oh dude, this is fine. You know, like whatever it's, it's, it's cool. It's a cool idea, you know? Yeah. And that's the other thing. I think like the, the ideas, the core concept of the song matters so much more than like how perfectly you've tweaked that last. Dude, that is so true. Five, 10%. Like, you could, you could, if the idea is bad, it doesn't matter if it's mixed like amazingly. Dude, it's straight up. Like I always think of uh funk, the funk genre. If you look at funk, it's technically produced like shit or like mixed like shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it, it's garbage engineering wise, but, but like, it's funny when you try and define garbage with arc there, cause there really isn't one, you know what I'm saying? And when you look at funk and how successful it is, it's just like fucking blown out bass lines and distorted kicks with that funk cowbell going on and like those like you know memphis vocals and it's just it's got a vibe to it and like the the vibe is the core part of the song and that's honestly what listeners give a shit about is the vibe you know what i mean they don't care about how loud i mean i guess there's like noticeable differences but for the most part it's not it's not that hard to get your song to like whatever level you know what i'm saying but like as long as the quality isn't distracting right then yeah i think it's doesn't matter do you think your time in the military influenced the sound or the kind of music that you made? Or do you think that was kind of just with you all along? Uh, I, I've actually been thinking about that since I've gotten out. Cause I've, I've been getting, I got out like two weeks ago and I've been noticing like subtle nuances about myself where I'm like, Oh shit. Like I wouldn't be like this if I never joined or I wouldn't be, you know, and it made me think about that exact topic of uh, the music that I make. Uh, for me, like the whole reason my name's trisect is because uh, I want to trisect like split into three mind body and spirit that's kind of like the idea of it okay and uh for me there's like mind music to me is like sound designy like really cool sound design interesting texture really interesting rhythm and then the body is like that that pumping you know like kick and snare uh like dance music you're feeling it in your body Mm -hmm. and then spirit like the spirit side of it is more of like ethereal and um has like a like an essence to it you know what i'm saying and i and i really like to try and make my songs have all three but sometimes i'm just like nah this one's just body like this like like my song follow me that i released on aimed ahead that one's just like 
I don't give a shit. Like that shit's just heavy as fuck. And it's just like, uh, you know? Yeah. No spirit, but like it's just that. But getting back uh to the original question, which was wait, what was it? How did how did being in the military influence oh, your sound? Oh yeah, there all? it is. I was going like tangents or whatever. I definitely realized when I first started producing, I was making like very, very heavy, dark stuff. And it was like, oh, it was pretty much at the beginning of my career when I started producing, I was making just like body music or like just like like one feeling, which was just like push and shove primal rage music, you know? Mm -hmm. And then as I started kind of like maturing, uh, like, I don't know, just getting older, having different experiences, getting more comfortable in the Marines, learning more about production. I was like, oh shit, I kind of want to try out different feelings, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, now that I'm out, I'm realizing that like, I'm much more calm now that I'm out. Cause in the military, it's very high strung, like this, that, this, that, this, that. And I feel like I was kind of like always up there. So when I made music, I would like to, I wanted to like express that. Um, and like as an outlet, you know what I mean? Instead of, instead of like yelling at somebody and like being a dick, I'll be like, nah, I'm just going to make some like heavy ass house, dark house tunes, just shredding. And it's like, oh, you know, it's kind of like releasing it. it gives you that catharsis. Yeah. Yeah. So now that I'm out, I'm really thinking about kind of like a little rebranding thing. Like it's going to be the same kind of a vibe. Like I like a, I like having a kind of a grungy feel, you know, Yeah. but I definitely want to have more spiritual sounding or, you know, ethereal type feeling in my music. Okay. Um, not, not just like primal stuff, but yeah. Okay. Are you just talking about like the sounds that you're using or are you going to do words and lyrics and like the messaging of your songs is going to change as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I actually really do like working with vocals. Um, I don't know if you get like good vocals are just so fun to work with. And I've worked with one singer, Tisha once, and it was super cool. Mm -hmm. It was super cool, like making the beat and then having her go on top of it. And then I got to like, she sung on top of it. And then I got to get it all together and then like mangle it even more. That's fun. That's really fun. So yeah, I can see myself. I, I really like mid tempo or like how I'm, I usually make mid tempo or house. And I really like I really like ethereal vocals that are more like um, reverbed and sustained. You know what I mean? Not always like spoken word or like lyric, but I do like the presence of vocals. You know what I'm saying? Like the presence of like a vocal atmosphere or maybe like a vocal rhythm with house. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, but I also just like lyrics in general. So yeah, I can see myself doing all kinds of stuff, but definitely trying to shift to a more balanced state between like the mind, body, spirit thing. Okay. So in, in Japan, how much time did you spend here? Overall, I've spent about uh, a year and two months of my life in Okinawa. Okay, nice. Just like quick detour. How do you rate it? Did you get off base very much? Did you get to explore? Yeah, no, I definitely did get to explore. My first deployment was awesome when I got to explore because there's all there's there's like American village out there. It's like they know there's a marine base right there. So like there's a shop there and stuff. There's a lot of tourists. So my first one was super cool. Like the food, the beach ocean the people that was cool and then when i went back the second time it was like the exact same place i was like i, I was like okay i kind of know what to expect like it's going to be humid it's going to be cloudy uh, but you know it's going to be this vibe and that vibe so the second time around i was like okay i'm kind of over it but i did get to go to mainland japan which i think i talked to you a little bit about like on instagram yeah you mentioned that i got to go to uh, mount fuji and uh, we trained over there for like cold weather and I got to explore uh, Tokyo. We got to go to Tokyo. So that was that was sick. I went clubbing there. Nice. Uh, this this club called Warp. It was super, super cool. Um, and I really, really like listening to music in a club. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, shoot. I don't know. Like the way it translates from had. I don't know. I just love thinking about like, oh, shoot. This was once some dude like neck beard and terrible posture with his headphones on like doing this and now it's like making everybody dance i don't know i love the concept of that a lot and i love just kind of like sitting there and just like enveloped in it but yeah the, the sound in the club really really wraps you up it really does yeah have you dj'd any shows uh no nothing i've never i've never done anything because i all i've done is just produce music just put out songs because that was my thing i was like okay for these four years i'm gonna learn everything i can about music production try my best to like get something going with an artist name and just keep improving just focus on production only like get that solid and i feel like i i got to a point where I'm like okay the stuff i make now i'd be comfortable like playing live confidently uh so i know like the bare bones of djing but i've never i've never played live um and I'm, i really want to like i'm super excited to but yeah no I never played a venue or anything just just a music producer i mean now that you're out the door is open hey the door is open man it is i'm, I'm super excited to like try and dabble with that stuff um it's definitely like a dream of mine. Like I've been making this stuff for like four years in my barracks room. And I always imagine like, dude, 
maybe one day like I'll be playing this song in front of a bunch of people and like I'll know that I was just sitting in a box in the middle of the desert because I was stationed in 29 Palms, California. It's like in the middle of the desert. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know, that concept is so cool to me. Like, oh, okay, you know, so definitely, definitely going to try and live that out. Oh, yeah. So are you in a good spot for that? 